You see those dots floating around the Earth? Each dot is a piece of space junk orbiting the Earth at a speed of more than 15,000 miles per hour. Right now, there are over 130 million objects, larger than a millimeter and over 36,000 objects that are bigger than a baseball, hurtling around the Earth. For over 60 years, we have sent over 15,000 satellites into space essential for communications, navigation, military surveillance, weather forecasting, disaster management and so much more. Our growing interest in space exploration has led to faster development in space technology and also more successful space missions over the last few years. But what happens when they stop working? They are just left out there floating forever adding to the decades worth of space junk that is a serious problem and could cause long-lasting issues for years to come. In order to tackle this problem and make space exploration more sustainable in the long term, space agencies and private companies are working together on some interesting projects and concepts to remove space debris. Welcome to Lab 360. It's time to explore. The Earth's lower orbit is littered with defunct satellites, discarded rocket stages, debris from past collisions and anti-satellite tests. This increases the risk of even more collisions with active spacecrafts and satellites. This is known as the Kessler effect which was proposed by NASA scientist Donald Kessler in 1978. It is the scenario in which the amount of debris in orbit around Earth reaches a point where it creates more and more space debris, causing bigger problems for satellites, astronauts and future missions. What can we do to avoid these collisions? The first method to avoid dangerous collisions with space debris is monitoring the flight path of space debris and making avoiding maneuvers. There are many private companies that monitor space debris in real time and relay this information to space agencies to avoid these kinds of collisions. Sounds simple enough. But it's far more complicated than it may seem. The second option involves physically removing the space junk from the Earth's orbit and pushing it into the Earth's atmosphere where it will disintegrate upon re-entry. The European Space Agency is launching one such mission in collaboration with ClearSpace 1 in 2025. This mission involves ClearSpace craft capturing the targeted debris using its spider-like legs and then pushing the debris into the Earth's atmosphere. NASA has recently joined hands with US-based space logistics company Transastra in a deal worth $850,000 to clean up space junk using a special inflatable bag that will enclose and transport the debris back to Earth. The mission will still need to be tried and tested thoroughly before an actual launch. Another frontrunner is Astroscale, a Japanese startup is collaborating with international space agencies to come up with an innovative solution to target environmentally critical debris such as used rocket upper stages and defunct satellites. There are several other private companies working towards their own concepts and solutions for space debris removal. As more and more private companies and space agencies begin working on these projects, the removal of space debris will become more feasible and will make space travel more sustainable in the near future. Russia, the United States and China are the biggest contributors to the amount of space junk currently orbiting the Earth. One way to reduce the space junk we produce from future missions is to have more reusable parts and sustainable missions. Companies like Elon Musk SpaceX, Amazon founder Jeff Bezos Blue Origin and ISRO have successfully developed and tested launch vehicles with reusable parts. The European Space Agency ESA, the Japan Aerospace Exploration Agency JAXA, the United Launch Alliance ULA, have also begun working on research and development on their own reusable launch systems. At the moment, most of these space debris removal plans are still in the experimental phase. Space junk is a serious and growing problem for all future missions. What do you think of these missions to clean up the Earth's orbit? Which one do you think is the most likely to succeed? What do you guys think? Drop in your comments below and don't forget to subscribe to Lab360, because together, we will explore.